the best short films for lifelong learning, recommended by teachers for teachers. This is Short Films Teachers Love, with your host, Richard Lee. Right across what we could call the, the great universal tree of knowledge, if you like, short films have a place. So right at the base of sort of generalist primary school to the very, you know, tips of the little niche twigs of, of university. So what generally can you say before we get into the films? Can, can we do with films at the, at the tertiary level? In other words, what value are they to you in your teaching and learning with students? There's a few different reasons that I use short films. One is, it's perhaps a bit unexpected really, but um, uh, obviously at university, uh, one's contact hours with students is quite limited. Um, uh, my lectures are 50 minutes long. Tutorials can be a bit more luxurious at an hour and a half, but that's basically all the contact time that I'd have with a student on a particular subject per week. So in a sense, every, every second counts. And um, short films are invaluable teaching resources, uh, both because they are short and uh, able to encapsulate um, an idea or a provocation um, very effectively and efficiently. Um, but maybe if that sounds a little philistine, I'd add that uh, I am often drawn to short films that do at least double duty, that, they, that they're often doing more than one thing at the same time. Uh, they're not simply there uh, as kind of informational kind of clips, but rather they um, enact the kinds of information that they are also communicating. And if that sounds a bit obscure, then maybe it will become clearer as this conversation goes on. Yeah, it definitely will, having, having watched the ones that you've recommended. Well, let's, uh, let's get into the first short film that you've chosen, and it's called Catastrophe, written by Samuel Beckett. Like the look of him? So, so. Why the plinth? To let the stalls see the feet. Why the hat? To help hide the face. Why the gun? To have him all black. What is he on underneath? Say it. His night attire. Colour? Ash. Light. The reason that I use this film to teach with, in addition to it being uh, very short and sort of kind of small but perfectly formed, as it were, is because it's actually one of Samuel Beckett's most accessible plays. Beckett uh, has a reputation for having written plays like Waiting for Godot, in which famously one critic said, nothing happens twice. And um, uh, the language works in a very distinctive way. There's that very Beckettian combination of great precision, especially around the selection of particular words, particular actions, and then these strange ambiguities and sort of vaguenesses. And it's really in, sort of in between the two, uh, or maybe in a tension between the two, that the effect of, of the film and of the play uh, is felt. Um, it encourages students to think about theatre as a place where power is enacted, either um, in the kind of literal sense that there's a, there is always a power dynamic in the creation of theatre, but also that it brings our attention to the ways in which power may be theatricalized or spectacularized elsewhere in our societies. And also, I think, was it this one that you said you use it um, in attracting students on open days and things like that, or was that another film? This was, that was no, the, no, I, it's true. I, I also I do a sort of just a half hour workshop when we have the big University of Melbourne open day, and um, uh, students who are interested in finding out about the different um, majors that we offer come often with their parents to do to to just find out what theatre studies involves. Fantastic. All right. Let's move on to the next film. What is live art? What is live art? Well, at its most fundamental, live art is when an artist chooses to make work directly in front of the audience in space and time. So instead of making an object or an environment, a painting, for example, and leaving it for the audience to encounter in their own time, 
Live art comes into being at the actual moment of encounter between the artist and spectator. Or at least it's great for teaching because it does several things simultaneously. In, in fact, it does, it does them in an almost exemplary fashion. It does what it is about. A, a man dressed in a suit, looking a little bit like a news reporter, gives a five-minute lecture or speech um, addressing the question, what is live art? But the closer you look, the more you realize that there's something else going on, that um, while some members of the public are oblivious to him, increasing numbers have their attention drawn to him. I think that we don't need to give the ending away, but we can say that there is a kind of uh, a rather cheeky reveal at the end. <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> as it were. And, um, uh, and, and what's fascinating is that the well, I was about to say audience, but of course, they are, this is where the film is interesting because immediately those kinds of terms become rather complicated. They're not an audience, although they seem to be watching him. So these are the ways in which this is not simply a kind of dry, albeit short lecture about a particular art form. It's a film in which gradually uh, what is being described comes to pass. It, it happens uh, before our very eyes, as it were. Mm -hmm. All right. The last one we're going to talk about is called The 9th of August. I use this film in a series of lectures on what we have come to call performance studies. And performance studies is a way of examining a wide range of other kinds of um, events um, and practices in the wider society that have a performative dimension. Mass performance allows us to take a few steps away from the theatre and ask ourselves what can we learn about these kinds of events with what we know about the theatre. But one of the reasons I also wanted to introduce some of the material from Singapore and also some discussion, for instance, of the, uh, the Beijing Olympics is because we have many students who are from the Asian region and um, having uh, spent a long time in Singapore and having some knowledge of Asian performance cultures, uh, one of my aims has been to introduce more material into the into the curriculum uh, that represents or reflects that region. So it's also a, a part of a process of, of exploring cultural diversity in curriculum. Thank you so much. It's been, uh, it's been fascinating to see how you make use of short films. So thank you for sharing your insights today on my little show called Short Films Teachers Love. You're welcome. Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk about them. To listen to the full conversation, join us on SoundCloud, iTunes or Stitcher. For extra notes and community support, join our Facebook group today. <laughs>